Hello and welcome back to the Life on the Wrist YouTube channel. Today we are going to be looking at an extremely beautiful Longines reference 2183 from the 1940s. I think you're going to really enjoy this specific piece. I think it's got a very interesting case design. Obviously the history of this piece is quite interesting considering the way that Longines was operating during this time. And um, I think it's a really nice piece uh, to, to go over. So. Um, I will quickly just mention, as if you don't know, for the videos that we make for the for the, for Life on the Wrist, we always have an article on lifeonthewrist.com where we have uh, a more in-depth look into this specific piece. We also have some more pictures there. I will mention the case back and the movement of these watches, or the watches that I in, in these videos. If you want to see images of those of those things, please go over to lifeonthewrist.com. You can see a picture of the movement and case back, um, which is important to a lot of the stories that we tell about these specific pieces. So, plug done, uh, without further ado, let's jump into this watch. The 1940s were an interesting time for the world. Not only from a historical perspective with what was happening on the different continents, but also from the perspective of innovation and design. All the while, watch companies were producing exciting watches that played a big role in fashion and utility. Longines, one of the companies at the forefront of watchmaking during this era, was actively operating in many markets, the USA market being one of them. In this market, the variety of watches sold was so vast mainly because the company worked with many different watch, or excuse me, case makers who produced exceptionally individual cases for the watches. The models Longines used, the model Longines used was to outsource their case making in the USA, given the import taxes and duties for watch cases were very high, and then import watch movements that would be married up with the cases in the USA. We'll come back to that idea a little bit later. The watch today is a reference 2183-1. Technically speaking, this reference number is not a tracked reference because the USA market um, did not use reference numbers like the European market, but that is what one can see on the inside case back of this watch. This Longines was manufactured in 1943. The watch has a 10 karat gold filled case that is in good condition. Uh, there are signs of polishing as you can kind of see on the on the case back and on the sides of the of the watch but the um watch still remains uh, ha has fairly sharp edges and remains in pretty good condition a very distinctive part of the overall case design of this watch is the coin edged finishing that one can see on the upper section of the case if you look between sort of the sandwich of the case, you'll see that coin edge finishing um, just below the crystal. It provides an additional layer from the side profile of the watch, which gives the watch additional depth, which I think is um, quite important with this specific piece. The watch features short fin-shaped lugs that angle gently towards the wrist, as you can see. Because they're not extremely curved, the watch sits flatter and larger, making the 34 millimeter case um, quite wearable. They curve just enough to allow the watch to sort of hug the wrist really nicely. The watch has a cream dial that has gold applied hour markers in sort of an art deco font. As you can see, they're quite long and accentuated. And it also has a subsidiary seconds dial. The watch hands are long and thin, and that matches both the hours, minutes, as well as the subsidiary seconds. To understand more about how this watch case came about, looking at the case back can be educational. I have pictures of the case back on our article on lifeandnurse.com, so be sure to go there to see the images. But if one looks at the case back markings, the watch was actually sold by the Longines Whitnarrow Watch Company that operates out of New York and Montreal. The company, company's name is engraved on the inside case, case back. Whitnauer was a successful brand in the USA and was acquired by Longines just after 
World War II, where they became a distribution partner for Longines. In 1968, Longines Wittenauer was sold to Westinghouse Electric Corporation, and in 1994, Longines ended their distribution relationship with Wittenauer. But during their partnership, many different models hit the market that were, are interesting to collectors. What is worth noting is the movement of this watch um, is from 1943, but as I mentioned, the Longines Wittenauer Group only became a company in the 1950s. So it's likely that this movement um, was only married up with a case uh, later. Additionally, on the case back of the watch, one can see a 10 carat stamp and a stamp in the shape of an urn with the letters CO on the inside. Normally, for um, one, can, one is able to see uh, additional stamps that indicate the case maker of the watch. We've covered um, a variety of Longines is made by other case makers that were based in the USA market. Um, this one was a little bit trickier to find, but based on researching the stamp, it appears, appears the case was manufactured by the Keystone Watch Company, Watch Case Factory. The factory had two locations, one in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in the US, and one and the other one in Riverside, New Jersey in the USA. They began operations in 1880 and were owned by um, Hagstaws and Thorpe. In 18, six, 1886, they incorporated and consolidated many of their individual entities, and they really focused on manufacturing gold and silver cases, um, particularly gold and uh, filled cases. With the case back off of the watch, one can also see the movement of this watch. The watch runs in the caliber 10L movement. This is technically the Longines caliber 10.68Z movement. The 10.68Z name was used for watches, for Longines watches that were sold in the European market, while the caliber 10L was the name of the movements for the USA market. One can see the 10.68Z under the balance wheel, which verifies this information. This movement was launched in 1932 and used many of the new developments in movement manufacturing that came about in the late 1920s. Namely, producing movements at lower costs, quicker production, and higher finishing standards. The caliber is highly finished with poli polished steel and mounted jewels inside threaded chatons. It has been said many times, but Longines really was competing um, they really were competing at the highest level during this era. The balance wheel is stamped with the import code LXW. This inscription was the import code used by the Longines Wittnauer group when they imported movements from Switzerland to the USA. So it's likely that this movement was put together in Switzerland, shipped and imported to the USA, and then it met up with its case that was made by Keystone Watch Case Company, and that is the watch that you see today in all of its glory as i mentioned um 34 millimeters is the case case size for this piece but if you look at on the wrist you really do notice the fact that these lugs the way that the lugs are meant, are situated allows this watch to sit um, a lot larger on the wrist i think it's a really beautiful piece and especially because of that added coin edge finishing gives it a, a little bit of a different dimension so, the case of this Longines is really distinctive. At 34 millimeters, some collectors may shy away from this type of watch, but I think the coin edge finishing and polished edges really allow this watch to sit a bit bigger and also make it something enjoyable to see on the wrist. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this Longines from 1943, reference 2183. As I mentioned, reference numbers weren't really used for watches manufactured in the USA market, but it is on the inside of the case back, so we will go with that for now. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, be sure to check out our article on lifeinthewrist.com if you want to see some pictures of the movement as well as the uh, inside case back, which can be quite revealing about the watches that we talk about on the channel. <clears throat> I really do think that this watch is uh, an incredible size, an incredible m case manufacturing um, to make this watch really come alive, and on the wrist, it's an absolute joy to wear. I think Longines of this era was at the forefront of many 
um, basically I think a forefront of watchmaking and they were doing things at such a high quality um, compared to many other brands that you wouldn't you, maybe they compete with now they really were competing with a lot of the, the, the big players uh, during that era so um, a really beautiful piece and I hope you enjoy taking a look at it let me know in the comment section below what you think about this Longines. I'd also love to know if you own a vintage Longines. Let me know in the comment section below which one it is. Um, and I'd love to hear uh, about how you came about it, where, why you wear it, why you decided to buy it, or why it came into your possession. So uh, let me know in the comment section below. If you are new to Life on the Wrist, be sure to subscribe to the channel and share this video with a friend who might be interested in watches. And if you wouldn't mind liking this video, it really does help me out. With that said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and until next time.